Greetings everyone. In this chess video, we are literally going to answer the question, how does the knight move? Now, of course, that's sort of a joke. Of course, um, your regular chess fans will probably recall Andrea Botez asking Magnus Carlsen that exact same question. Now, this is not exactly a very direct beginner video. I should hope that everyone here knows the very basics of chess. Of course, the knight will move, you know, two squares in one direction, then one, you know, square over. That's kind of the way I've heard it. Um, it can also go sideways. But here we're not looking at the exact rules. We're out looking at something a little bit more advanced. Not too advanced, but a little bit more, I'd say, intermediate level. Now, this is also a slightly different chess video, but I think it's, you know, a little interesting geometry, and we can actually learn some fairly advanced ideas with it. So, what am I talking about here? Okay, well, first of all, you know, we can just ignore both kings here. We are literally just focusing on the knight. There is something very strange about how the knight moves. Very strange indeed. Um, certain squares that are closer to the knight are actually harder to get to than others. And so, let me take a look at an example here. Well, remember in the thumbnail, if you saw, you know, that, that it's kind of a joke. The knight had two different squares here, and the furthest one was actually closer to it. Well, that's actually an interesting point, and that wasn't an exaggeration. That's actually true in this case. From this knight's perspective, this f4 square here is actually fairly close. It's only two jumps away, so it takes two moves to get there. However, this square, which is half the distance, literally just next to it, it actually takes three moves for the knight to get to this square. Maybe one possible route could be something like this. Um, so that's an interesting observation, where if we were to put like a number value to it, we could think, well, it takes two, two possible turns, you know, to get to any square that is away from the knight like this. So we kind of got like this little, almost a kind of like diamond type pattern. But then we might also notice, well, there's also, you know, two squares could also take for any of these darker squares here. You know, for example, if we wanted to go to the C5 square, we could maybe take this route. That also takes two moves. You know, and so you start to notice some patterns with how the knight moves. You know, all of these squares that I've highlighted here, it just takes two moves. And so just knowing this, just as a sheer, I don't know, geometry, I don't know how you'd put it, um, just kind of more like a visual way of looking at it, you know, then it becomes a matter of knowing, okay, well, if, it t if it's two s turns to get to any of these squares, then it's just a matter of finding what route, you know, because in a game, maybe one of them is blocked. Like, maybe, say, black has a pawn on a4, you know, well, that pawn would be attacking the b3 square, so I can't use that square. So, maybe if my knight is trying to get to c5, of course, I'm not going to take this route, you know, this route, but then I might say, well, I know there's other routes, you know, it takes two, maybe I can go a different way like this. And this becomes a lot more relevant in closed positions, um, but it's also instructional to just kind of think, you know, not only end games, but just really efficient how you can get from one place to the other, because knights really can't travel across the board too easily. So, you know, if we were to look at the black king over here, way over there, I can get rid of these colors here. So if we were to look, how can the this white knight move to this black king? Um, how many turns would that take? Well, it's actually interesting. You could actually calculate it and count. Um, but just from memorization, I know it's going to take me four moves to get here. And you know, we could look at it, you know, um, it'd be like something like one, two, three, four, you know, something like that is possible. You know, of course, there's other routes to get there. Um, but it would be something along those lines, we know that it would take four, just because of the geometry, how far away this king is. But what's also strange about the knight is this square, half the distance, also takes four moves for the knight. There is no way possible to get there sooner. Maybe something will be like one, two, three, four. You know, so the knight is a really interesting piece where, you know, from the knight's perspective, both of these squares are the same distance away. That's kind of a funny concept, you know. So, you know, back what I was saying before, you know, all of these squares here, it takes two squares for the knight to jump to. That's kind of interesting. But what about the squares that are, you know, right here, the light squares, very close to knight? Um, I'll put these in a different color. Um, these actually take three. Um, so maybe to get to, like, this blue square here, this d5 square, maybe it would be, like, 1, 2, 3. And you might notice some patterns here, you know, already, you know, um, we're kind of noticing this weird thing that, you know, we're, just because something is close, that doesn't mean the knight can get to it that quickly. Now, instead of trying to highlight literally all of these, um, you can mess around with this on your own time, you know, have fun with this. 
um, I'm going to show a diagram that's actually really helpful and actually gave me the idea for this video. Um, so here I'm going to pull up this diagram from an article I found from Peter Cole. He's a software engineer. And he's got a lot of nice things in this article, blog article that he did. Um, but specifically this diagram I really like. And so if we were to imagine the night here, which would be kind of the D4 square, um, it literally shows exactly how many jumps it takes for the night to get somewhere. And so we'll notice like this square over here, you know, going back to our position, that is where the black king is in relation to our knight. You know, so this would take four squares. And so you notice just in the patterns here, you know, you can, if you can memorize this visually, you already know how many squares it takes. You know, like for here to get to this square, this would be kind of like the equivalent to C8. It would take three squares, you know, th or not three squares, um, three turns. So it would be like one, two, three, you know, following these. And if you go back to the board, something like that could be the exact same thing. You know, we could go one, two, three. But, of course, it's very good to have this memorized because then you don't have to calculate. Maybe you're under time pressure or something. You know, so it's just one less thing to worry about in a game. So I think that's kind of a little fun thing to, you know, gave me this video idea, I guess, per se. Um, one other thing I will show, and I'll enlarge my screen just so it's a little more clear to see. Um, there's also another little exercise that I found a very long time ago. Um, I think it was on Eric Rosen's channel. Um, it was a puzzle inspired by Ben Feingold. I'll also leave a link to this in the video description afterwards. I'm not actually going to play through it, but it gives you good practice for the night. So if you want to do this exercise, it gives you a good chance to practice the visualization skills from what we just looked at. Um, in this puzzle, you basically, you know, the black queen never moves, and you can't capture the queen, and you can't move to any of the squares that the queen attacks. So like in this case, this queen is attacking the g8. So, you know, my knight can never go to that square. And basically what you try and do is you go, you know, across, you know, from h8 all the way to a8, and then you do the next row and the next row, and you literally get to every square in order. Um, so that's a fun little exercise. You can time yourself, see how quickly you can do it. I'll give you good practice with this visualization. So it's kind of more of a funny video, a little bit different. Um, but it was my take on literally how the night moves in chess. Hope this video was short but useful for everyone. And I will see you in the next chess video.